Hey everyone, Nathan back again for a daily upload schedule. Let's go. Daily upload. <laughs> Second day in a row after I did not upload for a month. Um, so today I want to talk a little bit about um, some great teachings that Solomon has bestowed upon us as youthful people, as people that are young and um, have no sense sometimes. I know I have been like that a lot. Um, but yeah, let's just go and get into what I wanted to originally start with. This is Proverbs 6, 25. This is what it says. Do not lust in your heart after her beauty, or let her captivate you with her eyes. Um, this verse, uh, it's saying, don't let beauty um, captivate you, and don't let lust enter your heart after she looks at you. You see, there's a message that Solomon is saying to us. It's that lusting after a woman's beauty and letting her captivate you with her eyes is a sorrowful thing, a sinful thing even, to God. As it says in Matthew 6, where it says, Whosoever shall look upon a woman with lust commits adultery with her in his heart. This is a deep message. And it's going to get even deeper once I start reading a lot more. Let's go ahead and turn to the other page. And let's uh, read another part of it. Here's what it says in Proverbs 5, 18. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. A loving doe, a graceful deer. Um, and then it says in verse, uh, that was also a little bit of verse 19. And then it says in verse 20, um, Why my son be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? Solomon's saying, enjoy the wife that you have. If you have a wife, good. Let you always be satisfied um, with her. and Let no other woman um, come in the way of you two. And uh, if you're a man, um, or I mean a woman, uh, let you always be satisfied with your husband. Um, and let it not become a uh, feud for uh, affection basically. So, I can't believe how much Solomon is saying. There's a very sobering message. Solomon is saying that everything is good in its day under the sun. That's what it says in Ecclesiastes. You know, everything is beautiful in, a t in its time. Everything is beautiful in its time. But someday beauty fades. It's true. I know a lot of times beauty, it looks very appealing in all things, but eventually beauty fades. Eventually beauty wears off. You know, we always say, oh, if this day could last just a little longer. That's because we love the day. We love the beauty of the day. We love the beauty of enjoying it with someone or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a wife or a husband. But the truth is, is that all this will fade. All of it. All of it. It's very sad. Beauty is in vain. So I have to ask you, what are you looking for in someone? What are you looking for in someone who you're going to date? Are you looking at their beauty? Which is what Satan only wants you to look at. Only the beauty. It's not bad to have someone who is beautiful as a husband or a wife. I never said that. I'm saying that beauty is meaningless. Is that all you look at? If that is all you look at, I promise you, it is reprehensible. Because God has made everything beautiful in its time, and only in its time. You see, beauty fades away. But I'll tell you what does not fade away. The gentle spirit of a humble and noble woman that believes in God, or a humble and noble man that believes in God, and serves Him, and reads His Word, I tell you, that will never fade away as long as this earth proceeds. So, pursue that which God loves. And He loves us. He loves a kind heart. He loves those who love Him. And He will help those and prosper those who follow His good commands. Let us go to Ecclesiastes, which I bookmarked for this beforehand. Um, of course, I don't have a, a phone, 
to uh, turn it uh, to. That would probably make it a lot easier, but it's not that bad of a deal here. I just have to find it. Okay, so this is what it says. In Ecclesiastes 11 uh, and a little bit of 12, this is around, uh, I'm starting in verse 9 of chapter 11. You who are young, be happy while you are young, and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eyes see. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. So then, banish anxiety from your body and cast off the troubles of your body. Or, so then, banish anxiety from your heart and cast off the troubles of the body. For youth and vigor are meaningless. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come. In the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them, before the sun and the light, and the moon and the stars grow dark, and the clouds return after the rain, when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop. When the, when the grinders cease because they are few, um, and those looking through the windows grow dim. Um, so when the doors to the street are closed, and the sound of gr uh, grinding fades, when people rise up at the sound of, of birds, but all their songs grow faint, when people are afraid of heights and are, of dangers in the streets, when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags itself along and no desire no longer is stirred, then people go to their eternal home and mourners go about the streets. Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well, and the dust returns to the ground it came from and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Meaningless, meaningless, says to the teacher. Everything is meaningless. Wow. Incredible. Incredible stuff. I hope, my hope is today that you guys learn something from this. That um, we should not pursue youth. We should not pursue beauty. For all these things fade away. Beauty will never last. Strong, uh, strong people and strength will never last. And I have to remind myself of this sometimes, every day. I have to tell Satan, away from me, Satan, in Jesus' name. As Jesus said to Satan in Matthew chapter 4. Um, and, you know, God loves us. God loves us so much. And he wants us to realize something. That the, lo that the longer that we stay on the now and how everything is good now, the less we will be able to appreciate what is ahead of us. Um, and God wants us to be able to love what is ahead of us and appreciate what is ahead of us. So I have to ask you guys, what are you pursuing in life? Is there a woman who is beautiful? Is she of noble heart? Pursue her. Then. If she has a noble heart that is edged towards God, pursue her. Beauty is yet but an add-on that will fade away. And to the men that pursue beauty, as though it is a prized treasure, and as though it is an uh, amazing uh, thing, know that it will fade. It will fade fast. And then you will be miserable, because you realize not how God intended beauty to be used for. Because God intended beauty to be forever. But Satan, the one who we so desperately cling to, and as a society, um, has made beauty a thing of temporality and of um, only existential. That's all. So, a sad and sobering message today I have to bring, but one that nonetheless will help you in your journey of life more than most. I hope that you guys learned something from this. I do hope that the God, the Word of God, speaks to your heart as it speaks to mine every day. Know this, that the devil is on the prowl. He wants to hurt you. He wants to kill you. He wants to make you attracted to beauty more than anything else. But you must say to him, Away from me, Satan, and Jesus him in. For it is written, Whatever, whatever, whatever. God will help you through this. But first you need to remove your enemy. You see, in war, 
there's two sides. You are either fighting against someone or you're fighting for that side against the other. There's no neutrality on the battlefront. You could accidentally get shot if you're neutral on the battlefront. If you lay down there, you will die. Pick up your weapon. Your weapon is this, the Word of God. As I read it to you guys, let you let you read yourselves it. Because I myself cannot help you any more than the Word of God can. Because I myself am yet but a vessel to speak the Word of God and truth to those who want to hear it. And even then, I am not perfect. I have sinned. I have sinned. And I am always going to sin. But the truth is, is that I figured out how to destroy Satan, how to keep him away from me in my life. Because at the name of Jesus, if you are a born-again Christian, if you have confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart that he is risen from the dead, which is in Romans 10, um, then you will be saved. And you can use the name of Jesus in its full power. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope this helped you guys. Let us rejoice, because there's one thing that will never fade. That is God. That is the Word of God. And that is Jesus Christ. So let us rejoice in the goodness of God. In Jesus' name, amen. See you guys later.